Hello, this is an assessment for restoration of the Blutner Style 8 Grand Piano, 6 foot 3 inches long, made in 1899. And uh, it has water damage caused by, uh, as we'll see in a minute, a leak from above. So it's affected the case, and it's also affected the actions, we'll also show you, um, and uh, that whole area there. There's no way that could be matched into the rest. Um, and uh, I'll polish a has taken a look at the photo of this and said that it, it, there may be a slight shadow showing, but if it's French polished, um, as the original is French polished, and a beautiful grain, and it'll all uh, match in nicely, but the whole lid will have to need redoing, and then the whole piano to match in, um, because if you redo rosewood, it always ends up darkening, and it won't match with the rest of the piano, so it's a clear case that it needs repolishing, and looking up here, you can see the, the problem that was had there, as you can see, um, apparently it was a pump that was behind the bath that was malfunctioning and so water came directly down onto the piano and onto the action too so the bottom end of the key, uh, keyboard here uh, has got problems. Now the rest of the piano is quite a typical faded rosewood really um, though you'll see parts of it are not as we'll show you in a minute but this is the sort of faded rosewood colour. The top is more of original redder rosewood colour and uh, if rosewood is rubbed down it always darkens so you end up with a very very wonderful contrast in the grain you can see some of the contrast here and other videos we've got will show the french polishing and how how it ends up so again here you can see the rosewood grain which is uh, very contrasting very beautiful we love doing blue the grand pianos and there's the inside of the fall now this was re um i'm pretty certain this was polished by harrods before it was sold in 1960, as we have a, a document relating to that. There is a Harrah's number here, which interestingly is different from other Harrah's numbers. It would date it about 1965, so I'm not quite sure why that Harrah's number's on there. And the zero at the beginning is not common. Uh, I think the most of the other ones we've had have started with, with a six or whatever, uh, not with a zero. So uh, that's slightly out of sequence. But um, anyway, we have the paperwork to show that it was redone in 96, or at least sold in 1964, and a pretty typical Harrods uh, finish. And my first grand I had a Richard Lip in my house, and that was refinished this way, also retailed by Harrods originally. Uh, they, they, they lose all the interest in the grain here. They're not quite sure what the philosophy of that was to cover up that beautiful grain, which we, it, once we rub it right back, uh, smooth it, it's a huge amount of preparation and polishing and preparation together take about 70 hours so it's not it's not a cheap job unfortunately but uh, restores it like it would have been uh, when it was originally made by Blutners. Now I've shown on other videos that right hand pedal shows you how much wear there's been this unaccord is not used that often compared to the amount of use of the sustain pedal apparently used by a piano teacher as well so obviously got a lot of use and we'll see that in a minute when we look at the action now looking at the inside of the acoustic side of the piano, it's in good condition. The dampers have thinned off over the years, uh, but they're still damping really well. So, so you can hear that. By the way, Blutner dampers can easily get angled like that um, where, uh, because they, they move very easily. So uh, it's important that they're all nice and flat. And sometimes if you've got bad damping on a Blutner, it's just one of these is like that. And all you've got to do is level it off. Uh, that's quite common. Um, and uh, these are it has been recon, re reconditioned. I think probably when, although these are these strings don't look like 1970s strings. Um, I don't think 1960s. So it could possibly be difficult to know. But um, very rich sound, and it's about three beats flat. Now Blutner's strings are very uh, almost at breaking point. They put on. That's why the, one of the reasons you get such a rich sound. So if you do pitch raise, you do that at your peril. So what we normally do is lubricate here, take them down, back up again, and hopefully you don't break any bass strings. Normally on, it's Blutner's particularly that we get a problem with the bass strings on, and Bosendorfer, we found, um, if you're a technician, you can comment on that, but they're such a wonderful, rich tone. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention the soundboard is in good, generally good condition. We have the original badge on it there. And uh, we have also uh, the serial number there. And the serial number's inside the piano too. So 
Uh, if your serial number's missing, you'll always find it inside the back on the right behind the action. Um, now, listening to the tone here, it's very, very weak here, and that's, as we'll see in a minute, the hammers are extremely flat round there, very, very weak, and you can see if you look down, the hammers are very, very flat, extremely used. There's quite a lot of Bluton of Grands, uh, Grands in general, sold by Harrods in the 60s and the reconditioned older pianos. So this is 1899, um, then reconditioned, uh, probably by London Workshop on behalf of Harrods. If you look at the hammers though, we can see uh, that they are extremely worn. If we look at this area in the middle, that's played the most. There's far too much hammer hitting the string here and that gives us a very dull sound. If this was pointed or much more pointed, probably about a quarter of that much. So this is, would be perhaps one and a half centimetres or over one centimetre and should be really, uh, say, about um, four, four millimetres, five millimetres hitting the string at that point. And then if we look up here, you can see that they are very worn generally. And at the top end, not as fortunately there's enough hammer left, but for refacing these, um, it would be very, very hard to get a good sound out of them. As I dig my nail into it, they're quite soft as well. So I mean, we would definitely, if it was a stock piano, replace the hammers. But obviously, we're doing this on behalf of a client. So um, it's hardly an option to just reface them, I think, because there's far too much hammer gone already. Uh, at the bottom here, there's an indicator that they're not original uh, Bluton hammers because they've been, if you look at the felts on the side here, uh, Bluteners wouldn't have left them messy, messy like that. I'm not sure if the video could be focused. There we are. Uh, that's definitely not Bluteners' work. But um, obviously it's functioning perfectly well, but uh, Bluteners would do a much tidier job than that. Um, so these are replacement hammers, and they've, been more, they've worn an incredible amount since then. The regulation on the action isn't bad at all. These screws here, actually, when I... Uh, came to the piano, these screws were, were, were loose and, and far down, halfway down, which is not a good idea because you need them as guide screws if you ever take off the top action. You need to know these don't, you shouldn't be moved at all really. And then you know exactly where to place the action when you put it back on. And that's not something you'd normally do if you are working on the keys, for instance, you want to replace the whole thing um, from here. Uh, anyway, sorry, that's technical information that's probably not relevant to the estimate, but. Um, it might, be, might hopefully be of interest. And pulling up this key here, you can see that the, the, the water's got onto the keys and this key is broken. Uh, these have, oxi these ox have oxidised and swollen up, the key's broken. And there are probably other breakages, that's the easiest one to pull up. And they're sticking as well, and that's to do with the oxidisation. Uh, so the water got into the action too and damaged that part of the piano. Uh, so when it came to the piano earlier, the, these would, were down here, so they should be screwed up. Yeah. Indicator that the piano has been worked on. Um, the action actually is quite quite well regulated, though it needs to be finely regulated. Um, there's no lot, not there's a little bit of lost motion actually there, here. That's the first thing to take up, uh, but very very minimal lost motion. Um, but it do, it will certainly be improved from fine regulation. Um, this is a patent action, by the way, if you're not used to seeing it. Uh, the other videos of it. I don't think I've gone on too long already on the technical side, sorry about that. So that's an assessment of a, a Blutner Style 8 Grand Piano, six foot three inches long, Alicott scaling, um, for, rest, for reconditioning or restoration really. And it's had quite severe damage on the, the cabinet, which needs, needs, re, needs French polishing now really. Blutner's always such a well-made piano that it stayed in tune very well since 2013. Uh, there's a date showing it was last tuned, and um, there are one or two bass notes that are a bit out, particularly, and there's obviously unisons, but generally the tuning is held. It's about three beats flat. Now, because the Bluteners are so beautiful sounding pianos, it's got a bit sticky there, um, they're often played and played and the hammers are getting flatter and flatter and the tone round here gets weaker and weaker and you can doesn't really give enough body to it so really replacing the hammers is the answer to that but it's a very inspiring sound even with that As a 
beautiful tenor area and the break points between bass and treble, which I mentioned on other videos, that's out of tune. It's also very, very well made. Thank you very much for listening.